On this video, we will discover a new generic structure called overshoot and collapse. To start with this, we will see how the structure behaves. So the behavior of one of the stocks. And we're analyzing this stock in particular. So this stock increases exponentially and at some point in time, it collapses and starts decreasing with a goal-seeking behavior toward zero. So what is all this structure about? This structure contains a stock. This stock can be anything that consumes something. And here we have another stock called the resource. And this is the resource the stock is consuming. So this can work in different ways. Some examples can be deers living in a forest and the resource can be vegetation in that forest where that serves for the deers to feed on. It can be, for example, the production of some plastic and the resource can be uh, the oil available. It can be also, for example, the number of cigarettes you smoke per day and the resource would be your health. So this structure is very commonly used and it's very useful to understand it in order to build models that are very robust. Also this structure contains two table functions that are used and we'll see everything in detail. So we see here that the stock increases exponentially. We have seen this, uh, this is typically like, like, the, like the birth rate, this can be the birth rate and it increases some population and in declines based on the loss, loss fraction. So this will be the death. So this is a decline on whatever the stock is. And the stock consumes the resource. So you have an amount of consumption per unit of stock that consumes the resource. This resource also grows. For example, vegetation will reproduce itself uh, through a growth fraction. So you have this reinforcement loop that makes the resource growth while it's being consumed. Now, if you remember the last lectures on table functions, we have two table functions that we want to see. For the first one is the effect of resource on loss fraction. So you can see that, as we did in previous models, you have a normal loss fraction, for example, 0.1, and you have a normal amount of resource for example, 100. So you generate a resource fraction, which is the resource divided by the normal amount of resource or the maximum amount of resource, depending on what you're doing. And this will create a unitless variable that will go into the table function. So the input will be between zero and one. And we can see here, our table function goes from zero to one. And the output is the effect on loss fraction that will be multiplied by the normal loss fraction. So with a very low resource fraction, meaning that the resource is very low, the loss fraction of the stock will be very high. And when the resource is very high, then the loss fraction will be very low. This makes sense when you think that the stock is competing for the resource available. So this is the first table function that affects the loss fraction. The second one is the effect on consumption from the resource. So we have the same fraction of resource that affects the consumption per unit. So you can see here that when the resource fraction is very low, meaning that the resources are very low, the consumption is also very low because it's more difficult to find resources, for example, for a deer to find vegetation if there's no vegetation around. So the consumption is reduced. If there's a lot of resource, the consumption goes up, up to a level of normal that you define here. Meaning with abundant resources, you have a normal amount of consumption in order to grow the stock. So this is the structure of the model uh, basically a stock consuming resources and the resources grow uh, slowly. This is the rule. And you have different balancing and reinforcing loops. In particular, this balancing loop that contains 
two stocks will be more strong in the long term. And this is what happens with any model. If you have more stocks in the balancing or reinforcing loop, that loop will be more powerful later in the model compared to the beginning, always depending on what initial conditions you have. But in general, you will, you will have the most power at some point during the simulation. So if we analyze this, we have uh, assuming that the inflow is bigger than the outflow in the beginning, and we, I define some values to make that happen, then the reinforcing loop here will be stronger and we will have an exponential growth of the stock. And this exponential growth will remain until a balancing loop stops that. And this is the balancing loop that will make that stop whenever the outflow starts being bigger than the inflow. And whenever that happens, this balancing loop will be extremely strong very fast. So let's see the details here. If we run the model, the exponential growth is very well seen in the stock until it reaches around 50. And in here, in, when it reaches 50, you can see already that the outflow overpowers the inflow. So you know that the stock is going to decrease. At this point, this balancing loop is extremely strong. So what happens is going to decrease very fast with this goal-seeking behavior towards zero. And we have seen this behavior before. So this is what happens and this is the, a very interesting shape, which is the overshoot and collapse structure. And it will stay in, at zero, and depending on the conditions of your model, it can grow again, depending on how much you make your source grow. It can grow again, and uh, you will have an overshoot and collapse again. But that will take some time. Sometimes uh, people would think that this balancing loop also is quite bigger, so it will get power uh, during the simulation, but it has only one stock. You only define the power of the loops based on the number of stocks that it contains. And that strength of the loop comes later during the simulation. So it builds up strength as the simulation progresses. And this is something that happens in real life. And if you find data for your reference mode, for example, that has this behavior, you probably can assume that you, you need to generate a structure like this one in order for your model to be complete and robust. And this is all for this structure. We will see more of them in the future.